The air feels weird. The air feels weird. Yeah, what are you bringing to the table? You you're bringing an energy that's oh. um 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 I'm an empath and so <laughs> I can sense other people's energies. Um yeah, my my energy is a little wild today. Uh don't you I, love when people claim like, "Oh, I can sense other people's energies." I'm like, "Me too," because they're standing because I've known them for 10 years and because you're looking me in the out. eyes and I'm twitching. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, no, my it, I was just really flustered. I had like doctor's appointments and everything today, and I felt like I wasn't having enough time. I woke up at like six a.m. to get everything done. It still didn't work out. Oh, fuck. Um, no, I. Uh, by the way, before we start on, <laughs> on like a classic, M finds a way to complain about things. Note: Did you um maybe get something at your door today? Well, that was my why I drink today. Okay, I was very nervous it didn't get there. No, no, I just I felt bad because I wasn't texting you, but I was like I was gonna bring this up on the show. Okay, oh, no, I okay. Well, I'm glad it got delivered to you. I uh, s- s- Christine has some shows without me coming up, and I <sighs> and without Eva, it must be noted because must I have be become noted. the point person for for Beach Two Sandy, and my brother's like, since you know this better than i do can you be the point person i was like totally well i uh i'm very excited and proud of you i'm excited for you and proud of you and also happy to um not have anxiety building in me today but i'm sure it's building in you and so i wanted to send you something but i i was nervous because just one of the other things i got all flustered about today is the delivery guy called me and seemed so confused about how to deliver something and i was like the thing to I, me yeah which like oh. it was just like a normal like i mean what? was it okay d- well, let me let me let me set the scene yeah what did i, I send on, I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember i was on a road trip for many days i've been driving well i, I was driving blaze was driving but i'm just like at my wits end and i'm home for 12 hours and then i leave for tempe arizona the beautiful metropolis of tempe <laughs> tomorrow morning at like 6 a.m for a show for beachy sandy anyway also by the way thank you to everyone who like listened to the show we got like a boost in listens after that one episode where i oh, mentioned yay. the show so that was very nice um but so i got home and i'm like trying to get my bags in and my mom's like this got this was on your front porch and it's this big edible arrangements bag and bag. i'm like M sent me something because who else would send me that and there were all these chocolate covered strawberries and there was like a box of like little drink like where you like you hot I think they're like hot cocoa bombs or something oh I kind of do remember it saying said that. like it was, like was a drink bomb it's for alcohol I think it should be oh it I, is oh I, I didn't even look that closely it looked like a hot chocolate one. Oh, oh well, if that it, changes if it's, everything if it's hot chocolate I'll be disappointed I think I got that because I thought it was a cocktail situation I'll still be th- it might be I didn't look close enough I was very excited and by the way Leona had I was gonna say her first but no she's had them bef- chocolate covered strawberries the last time you sent them too and mm-hmm. she just it's like I'm peak. telling you the peak of her existence these chocolate covered strawberries so far it sounds like her and i finally have like you, a, you a similar palette a food yeah palette. you do you really do connect on that level um, um but so thank you em and it was it was just so thoughtful and like i don't know i just it just made my day so thank well, you well i think i you're welcome i wasn't going to i wasn't trying to like flex and like bring it up i just wanted to make sure it actually got there because the delivery guy seemed like he didn't know what stairs were and i was like oh that's well you don't either to be fair you just see them as a threat so i I feel like (laughs) i even said i was like do you have an issue with stairs and he was like no i just i do what you want me to leave them on stairs and i was like yeah i was like i don't know might have done which sometimes happens sometimes they go to the side porch uh-huh. and they're like really confused because there's like a gay and like a baby gay and like he seemed maybe... really as flustered as i was today That's so bizarre anyway, i really don't have an explanation I, for that part of me thought he was like trying to act confused so he could swipe them that was my big fear he... <laughs> he's like sorry i don't get it so i'm gonna take <laughs> these strawberries home even though i work for edible arrangements and probably can eat these all day long i know i was just nervous that it, it got it didn't get to you so anyway i wanted to send you something because this is where i also shout out christine for my birthday christine sent me this like holy Who, crap by the cake. way the to the liver the delivery person was also incredibly confused and i was like <laughs> i'm not i was like i am in a different state it was 
very chaotic anyway well i want to thank you for that because it was a very yummy yummy colorful cake in every way I, w- I and picked neon green as the color option you picked neon green for the frosting you picked rainbow for the six slices yeah. and then yeah. you picked candy in the center yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was like <laughs> willy wonka exploded but um i uh it was very yummy. I felt bad. I wanted to send you something on your birthday, but I knew you weren't in town. Anyway, there's that. So oh, that was so nice. Uh, yeah, no, this was so perfect. Thank you, Em. The the other reason also why the I... Barry said thank you in big letters. So I was like, oh, you're welcome. I don't know what for what. Maybe I for picked the cake. Good luck. But oh, cool. It said thank you, but hmm. I I'll take either or. Okay. <laughs> Well, the other reason I drink is because yesterday was my first round of this vein nonsense, Christine. How is it? I I'm so I'm It was Hold on. Hold on. This is why I drink. Look, Em, by the way. Remember how you had like to sl- we had to slightly delay our start today? Mm-hmm. Um because you had doctor stuff and I felt so bad cuz I was like not being as flexible as I like to be. Um but so then when we started uh on East East Coast 4 p.m. Mm. I was like you know what that means <gasps> oh thank Some god vino thank and so god. before you go any further I'm gonna need to fill up a wine glass because I have not been drinking much at all lately um, I know everybody but I'm exploring my THC world um, <laughs> and so the drinking has been uh, at a minimum lately so I, I'd like to now partake as is the tradition of this show thank you finally well to answer your question it was out of control i'm actually so upset i kind of like i i haven't had time today to cry but i will later oh, um. because so i already came in hot today knowing that i was going to tell you i drink because this was like a garbage procedure like like so, so you already had the procedure i already had one of what <gasps> i thought was two but it is one of four <gasps> it was i okay I got to say, if you're someone who has this procedure, apparently the pain range is like do you something say you've never what it seen is, before. Just in case people are like, do I have that procedure? I I'm, I got a vein ablation. I thought I got a vein ablation and phlebectomy, but apparently the phlebectomy is done separately. The fuck so is I have that? to go back. Um, so I have varicose veins. Thank you, Gammy, for everything wrong with Aww, me, Gammy. including including the varicose veins. Um, and for everything wrong with me. Wow. <laughs> She's the reason for my heart. She's really, she said, peace out, your turn to carry all this trash. So, <laughs> oh, <no>. um, <laughs> so uh, I had varicose veins that were like, I know it was more cosmetic than anything. Uh, I guess like they don't actually do anything too damaging to you, but mine were already so gnarly at 30 that the yeah, doctors were like, to get ahead of it, right? They were like, uh, it, technically yes it's cosmetic but also like yours is already so advanced that by the time you would want to get this removed later it will be permanent and also like a, the veins it might spread to deeper veins and then it's a real fucking problem oh shit so it like half, so that's fair yeah if it was yeah. just cosmetic based on the pain i would just let my other leg look like trash for the rest of my life yeah but apparently it sounds like it leads to worse things later and since it's already bad i might as well just do it Oh, Christine, it literally, okay, the way that the doctor just, I will say the pain, some people, if you ever have this, I can't tell you what the pain's going to be because apparently some people sleep through it like a little baby. They said that someone this week was snoring through it. And you're not, by the way, snoring because they chose to fall asleep during right, the not surgery. Right, sedated. <laughs> not sedated. Like, like, if you could be sedated, you know I would have been sedated. Um but yeah, apparently some girl just like took a little fucking napsicle during hers. And me, on the other hand, the way they described it is I looked like Bruce Banner becoming the Hulk for the first time. Oh, <laughs> no. Em. Oh, I'm it was, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so it sorry. It was like the like it was. I mean, sh- there were three people there. One of them was there to hold me down. <gasps> One of them. Her whole job was just to like pet my shoulder. So my brain would be distracted oh, with something else. My God. Which, by the way, didn't work. And I was trying so hard to keep it together. I know, yes, I'm like a drama queen. We know this. But like at doctor's places where people don't know me, I really try to like keep you my cool. You do hold it together typically. And this was this was uh, truly uncontrollable. I was like tears pouring out of my eyes, screaming, squirming, screaming, cussing, oh, 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 no. writhing. Because also it's not just like a shot of like Novocaine and you're 
face and then like your gums no i was gonna ask is there any pain management or no they and give you anesthetic but first of all i have a sensitivity again thanks gammy after all my heart shit (laughs) i didn't have this before but i don't know if it's long covid or what but because of my heart issues i now have a sensitivity to epinephrine which means that um, which is usually in a lot of numbing medications. And uh-huh. so they have a different one without epinephrine, but it lasts only half the time. Oh, good. So they have to basically, I'm for the rest of time now, have to sign up for double shots because they have to halfway through give me more when I start feeling pain. Um, so on top, of, <laughs> on top of that, it wasn't just one shot. It was my whole ass leg. And in case anyone's met me in real life, I'm six feet. Tarantula, and my- tarantula legs. I'm Tree six trunk. feet, and my legs are five of that. So are five of the feet. Yes. <laughs> the rest of me is like a little box. Um, I can't deal. So with this. they had to give me shots all through my legs, and it's it wasn't just. Oh my god! So um, I didn't know. I didn't know it was actually. I thought today was just like a um, consultation. No, that was last time. This yesterday was the first round. Of four oh, now. No, Great. Oh, no. But so not only that, but I'm incredibly ticklish on my legs. So now the part that on any given day, I want to like, like, you know, constrict and don't let anyone touch the ticklish part of me. That's the part that they have to stab with needles. Um, so imagine like a needle going into your armpit or like at the bottom of your foot, but it's behind your knee. And also when you're groin, like where your leg and your like no! crotch attach. No, no, no. You know, I can't do veins. We're already pushing it here. Well, so they ju- they give me a shot just to numb me, but the shot, I mean, imagine getting pinched and stabbed with a needle in the most sensitive spot possible. And then, okay, apparently the surgery itself isn't what hurts. They even said like 80% of the problem you're going to experience today. They were like, we can't tell you how you're going to react. Spoiler alert, it was not good. But um, the, I don't know what it is if you work in this field can you explain it to me but the anesthesia that they give you is the pain is the pain huh? like, it was so painful it was i don't it took my breath away and like it had Wait, to happen like in your leg it hurt i don't know if they like had like the needle and then they like injected it because they were able to somehow oh. tell me okay here comes the anesthetic so was or, it like, like burning knives fire everything <gasps> it was so painful and it doesn't just happen once it happened at least 10 times because they had to numb so many portions of my leg so every time they got a new part of my leg they had to go okay like get ready for another round of this it was i mean like i can't just thinking about it is getting me all fucking hot and sweaty and the fact that i have to do that three more goddamn times cry that's the worst part i'm i it's it's truly like it i remember thinking because there was one point and not only that but mid-surgery because it was on, it had two veins in the leg that had to be handled. And so one of them I have to be on my back and the other I have to be on my tummy. And so halfway oh, through the surgery in incredible like, pain, they're like, flip around, girl. And so, Are you and then serious? they serious. They made you flip. Mm-mm. And they had the homegirl who was holding me down the whole time. She, I mean, God bless her. And she was this tiny little thing. I was like, I'm going to, you're going to fly across the wall, <laughs> like across the room in a second. Ah, Christine, it was so painful that I'm kind of wondering if I should just not do any other procedure I mean, really, ever again. I'm just so sweaty just even thinking about it. About when I was it. when I was on my back and like they were doing it while I was like looking up at the ceiling, I remember thinking, I feel like this is the closest to like labor I'll ever be in because I, I was am gonna in, like, say I wonder what the pain comparison is. I was Lamaze breathing like I never have in my life. I was just chanting but like why this can't sucks. They this just sucks, fucking this sucks. numb you. Because apparently some people sleep through it because it's not even a problem. I don't know. But I told them I'm such a... I told them going in. I said, put it in my chart that I have a very low tolerance for pain. Okay. But so, like, what is it about epinephrine that you can't handle? Like, it makes your heart crazy? Yeah. Can you just risk it and be like, just fucking sedate me or something? I kind of... I don't know. And and it wasn't apparently either way the anesthetic part. Oh... The anest- no, they can't. Trust me, I begged. Trust me, I begged. And, uh, but it wasn't like even the epinephrine or whatever. I don't know what it is, but apparently it was like the. I I, I don't know how to describe it. All I know is it was just the most pain. And epinephrine or not, it happens. Oh my god, it was so bad. 
Oh, it was so bad. Anyway, not to like totally terrify anyone who's getting this done. Jesus but Christ. I always well, wondered why my Gammy like never got her varicose veins corrected. And now I'm like, girl, if you heard stories told by people like me. You? I know. I always heard that it was bad, but I also like it, like the procedure was bad. But I also thought like, oh, I heard that in like the 90s. In 2023, this will be a breeze. Yeah, I don't know how to handle it. Oh, Christine. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. It, oh my god, it's just so beyond. I mean, and I can't. I'm in. The, I'm an empath, so I'm really struggling right now. <laughs> and my like, I got my very first stitch. That was kind of crazy. Uh, oh. Anyway, I don't know why I said that so excitedly, but but one thing that is like the the I, irony is like the recovery is like totally fine. Like I feel like I got Charlie horsed, but other than that, I'm good. But it's okay. inconvenient because I have to. I have to go on a 15 minute walk every hour. That's so inconvenient. Oh. Like from. Oh, okay. Are you going to go away during I'm, the show? No, I'm going to double up after we record. Oh, a half hour walk. I know. Anyway, you. that's why I drink and it's a very good one. And it will also be the reason probably for the next fucking three weeks because I have oh, to keep Lord, doing get this. Get ready, folks. <laughs> Oh, my God. Anyway, <laughs> I'm ready to never think about it again. Well, I can't wait for all of the updates on the different menagerie of people they bring in to hold you down and restrain you and comfort you. They had to put it in my file that I'm like the worst of the worst to have They're to gonna deal get, with. I can't wait for all the updates. Seriously. Um, <laughs> I, I can't wait for the update when it's like, oh, you're done. You never have to do this again. Uh, me too. Uh, me too. That's the BRB, dream. I'm going to go on fucking edible arrangements, buy you some fucking berries or something. That's the least I could do. I would like that. Um. Yeah. yeah, I know you would. Uh, I know. I know. Oh, my God. All right. Well, anyway, I let's get into this. I didn't even have a sip of wine during that. I was so overwhelmed. I'm sorry. Um, if, I feel Honestly, bad. if I it made me actually think I might really actually drink alcohol and get fucked up just for the next time I have to do that. It was uh, so There's better crazy. ways, like, maybe, um... I was double Xanaxed, triple oh, propranolol'd. Well, never mind. And that's the amount that I take on stage. I don't really want to go further than that. But, like, but can't uh, you take... Zol... Uh, not Zol... Uh... Uh... Pl- <laughs> let me let me list through my little, uh, <laughs> apothecary and my, my mental apothecary. Um... Yeah. Can't you take a... Uh, propranolol and then get the epinephrine so that they oh it it's calm maybe but my ironically my heart was totally fine the uh, whole time okay that's it, good question it, mark <laughs> it was every other like I'm survival so instinct mark. ignited instead <laughs> oh god I'm oh my sorry. gosh i'm so sorry this sounds like a nightmare anyway one day i won't have a health problem to come to you guys about i promise it, it, i'm just so scared of of people being in pain you know it's just my least favorite thing and i don't want you to be in pain me either by the way wait tell me when it happens next time maybe i can practice my reiki Uh, it happens like every monday for the rest of time apparently so (laughs) (laughs) um just seriously let me know when it's starting and i'll I'll practice my reiki on you if it's if you want it if you don't if you're like fuck off then i will you can try in the waiting room where you can hear me screaming. I really feel like whoever was in the waiting room had to have gone home. <laughs> like, uh. like, I, I was absolutely, it had to have sounded like a torture chamber in there. Anyway, I know I, I obviously had the worst experience. I, If anyone else is out there that's about to have to deal with this, I so hope that that's not your Let's experience. hope you're the girl who snores, everybody. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, let's hope everybody else is just like, what are you talking about? Mine was easy. I'm and whoever is like that, be nice to me in the comments. Don't say like I'm being no, a baby. No, they better not fuck around like that. I mean, seriously, Ugh. I don't, I don't want any of that nonsense. But um, let's just hope for everyone else's sake that if they are in that same boat, that they're the ones who will have an easy breezy time. You know? Yeah, I certainly hope so. Also, I've got things in my eye. Oh my god, I've got so many problems today. Oh my god, you're full of problems. Oh, okay. Well, Christine, let's talk about one of your favorite topics. Let's talk about aliens. Uh, ooh, ooh. Okay, so I don't know if you've heard what's going on in the news recently. Yes. Oh, well, some of it. I don't look into it because I always, I always like live in like the constant suspicion that you'll cover it, so I don't ever dive deep. Well, you're such an empath. It's like you knew. <laughs> I 
know, right? <laughs> that um, got me. <laughs> okay, so for those of you who don't know, uh, there has been a whistleblower amongst us recently uh, oh. who is telling us all about some UFO naughty secrets in the government. Naughty, uh, naughty. Our whistleblower, his name is David Grush, and he was a former intelligence officer with, <laughs> like, I think, if not top secret, almost top secret clearance. <gasps> um, he was part of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, or the, AG- mm. the NGA, and he was part of the National Reconnaissance Office, the NRO, which is apparently one of like the top five intelligence agencies in the government. Wow. He's also a former member of the Department of Defense's AARO, or the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office. Oh, oh my. And they love an, uh, an acronym, don't they? Yes, they sure certainly do. So the DOD's AARO. Okay. And sometimes they have to make up words because they're like, that already exists. They're like, we can't do the <laughs> National Reconnaissance Association because that NRA exists. We'll be confused uh-huh. for the other one. They gotta yeah. make it up. I like to think that like one NRA and the other NRA would like have like a little like friendly debate though. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, I think we know which don't NRA bring, would win. <laughs> don't bring a verbal argument to a gunfight with the NRA. That's what okay. I always say. That's a fair. That's a fair one. <laughs> uh, so they, uh, when he was part of the AARO, what they did, they had a program where they investigated and identified uh ufo sightings or as they are called in the government uap sightings for Mm. unidentified aerial phenomenon yes this guy okay so he actually um i'm reading my own fucking notes and seeing that he did have top secret clearance good for me um (laughs) you guessed it you're psychic not only that but the quotes is super (laughs) super secret top secret intelligence (laughs) uh this was a quote about him that said that david Grush uh, often handed, no, sorry, often hand curried, 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 curried. Is this courier? what the guy with the strawberries did? <laughs> Is that why he's so confused? <laughs> he's like, I've he, never curried before. <laughs> I'm just going to say hand delivered. Who the fuck tried to make it fancier? Okay. <laughs> hand delivered. Yeah, there we go. So David, quote, often hand delivered, super secret top secret intelligence to the west wing of the white house he was trusted with the biggest secrets in the united states and then this is a quote from a different source talking about uh 2017 which uh we discussed this uh shout out to our episode guide if you would like it uh if you go click listen it's great thank you (laughs) okay so episodes 122 to 124 so it's a three-parter where i talked about the aatip oh, three-parter um, i know we don't i don't you get a lot of three it's not parters. often that we do that i will tell you i just listened to one of our three-parters i re-listened to our q and on episodes you did i've been meaning to and i'm so afraid like because not afraid but i'm like well that's going to be like a big emotional and mental and time commitment it's wild that I, I didn't think there were, like, updates, but I feel like all that information is so old now that, like, uh, maybe there isn't an update oh. episode. for Like, we were talking about it. It was so weird to hear us talking about something that was blowing our minds when it's just so fucking normal. And now, now it's like, well, womp womp. Don't you wish it was still so outrageous? Like, I'm saying things in there where I'm like, they think Trump is, like, their god. And I'm like, yeah, girl. Like, we, yeah, that's, where that's old been? news now. By the way, you are so funny in those episodes. What? Really? Yeah. You really brought oh, it. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> anyway, another three-parter. I think sometimes when I'm on pre- under pressure, I just like panic and shout anything that comes into my mind. Which, it worked. Like, you throw enough at the wall, like something will be funny, you know? It worked. It was funny. Very kind. Uh, Anyway, so if you'd like to go listen to 122 through 124 to catch up on AATIP, which is now, again, also old news, but um, this was... Back in 2017, this is a quote from a source about about it. Um, when the New York Times and other outlets revealed the existence uh, in 2017 of a covert program at the Pentagon dedicated to cataloging UFOs, oh my. Uh, this program was known as the AATIP or the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. I and this love all that. and this all came out of uh, videos that I think like uh, Air Force or Naval 
pilots, they were seeing things in the air and pictures and videos mm. got leaked. And then the Pentagon ended up just like releasing them in 2020 being like, fine, you caught us. There. Fine. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so this is another quote. The Pentagon established after all of this, a properly funded, publicly accountable team to investigate reports of UFOs or UAP. And David Grush, this is just a full circle moment from those episodes. David Grush, who we're talking about today, he was part of that team that got created. Oh, okay. But he says that the promised new age of government transparency about UAP was a fallacy. Bullshit. Yeah, I, be- I thought so. I knew it. So I think they uh, created it. Well, they created it for a few reasons. Remember, like a a, a de- like a senator majority lead like f- ended up funding like millions of dollars to it. Yeah, and so uh, I think his name was Harry Reid. But I remember that he they were saying like, "Oh, we're gonna be transparent about UFOs now." But really, isn't Harry Reid like super duper like famous like majority leader of the Senate or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh. I just didn't remember. And he's I- the UFO guy. He was the one who funded uh, the the program to the Pentagon oh, in 2017. Okay, wow. But um, he funded like $20 million or something. But also, I rem- if I was wrong about that fact, you guys, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm literally the worst person at. He is the Senate. He was the Senate majority lead at the time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, I'm, I feel I'm like, I just said that and then went, that was probably not correct. Okay. <laughs> but he, uh, I'm trying to remember like the pieces of that story, but I feel like the government was telling us like, oh, it's going to be all about transparency about UFOs. But really they kind of, I think in, in like private sectors were more like, oh, we're just going to let people report things more openly so we can learn about like foreign, like adversary nations and uh, their, okay. I think they were like kind of, there was two sides to this coin. Yeah. I'm not surprised, I guess. And now from David Grush, we're learning that that is absolutely true. He said uh, he was part of the team. And uh, this is a quote from him. There are many videos, like basically saying, like, if this, if we were all about transparency, then this is a quote from him. There are many videos that are totally fair to release through a declassification process. I find it very concerning from a transparency perspective that all the department has that the that the department has all these declassifieds uh, and yet only three famous videos were ever shown. Um, There are more concerning videos that left me with a lot of questions Mm, that nobody has seen. Vicious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So David was also a representative and an analyst, an analyst co-lead. So I guess he was like one of the bigger analysts of the group uh, and a representative to the UAP task force which apparently there's a UAP task force. I love that. Uh, From 2019 to 2021, that was his job. The UAP task force investigates UAP sightings and reports. And he, when he joined the task force, he learned that not only was he like now in a program within a program, but there was another program that even the task force in general didn't have access to. Oh, so it's like how fucking deep down this rabbit hole do I gotta go? Are there? <laughs> yeah, so he tried to join the task force. He was, but they wouldn't give him access. And he, over time, learned that the program was a broad crash retrieval program, which quote retrieved non-human origin technical vehicles, <gasps> which he says you could call spacecraft, if you will. But they were non-human exotic origin vehicles that have either landed or crashed. Ah! So the so the more seeker group was like the retrieval team. Uh huh. So that's Which, like SEAL six SEAL SEAL team six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like they're like the ones that even the like crazy famous or crazy like high up people don't even know who went in to get exactly Saddam Hussein. I'm saying a lot of things about the world just, that I don't understand. And you're I just shouting Harry Reid, Saddam Hussein. Th- ah. I'm, I'm saying it all wrong. But you know what? Maybe this is just the new me. I just say things uh, on a podcast and. It's- Oh, that's the new thing? Okay. That's the new me, and they're incorrect. <laughs> oh, wait. Never mind. That's the whole premise of the show. Okay, go on. I think it's because I told you you were funny, and you went, now I'm going to ride that high. <laughs> no, I went, I guess I got to swing the other way and try to be fucking intellectual. Like, that's ever going <laughs> to fucking work. What's so wrong with me? <laughs> well, so he uh, he basically, by finding that out, by the way, and by saying that alone to us, he 
is admitting there is a program in the government where all we do is retrieve spaceships. Like, like exactly. So, like, that, it ha- come on, people. So that sentence alone should tell you, like, whistleblower yes! 10 out of 10. Amen. So he wanted access to this group because don't we all? Yeah. And he ended up getting really apparently intense pushback we don't know what that pushback looked like he is keeping that private for now oh um but he ended up reporting it to congress <gasps> and he went to congress and he goes to this uh, this guy who's called the intelligence community inspector general okay How, dear uh, lord okay i would love for him to introduce himself at a bar to me and i'd go okay <laughs> great. i'd be like i fell asleep after the first word what was that <laughs> But then he'd say he like knows where spaceships are and it'd be like, oh my God, let me uh, buy yeah, a drink. It would suddenly be very interesting. <laughs> uh, so he goes to Congress, he goes to this inspector general and he tells them this, you know, I'm getting pushback from this program. And this is kind of confusing to me because for all the sources I looked through, which by the way, was a lot, I'm still very confused on like, how much he could say to them about top secret things when he had a higher clearance than them. I feel like it's like he was reporting, like what was he allowed to say and what wasn't he allowed to say? And I kind of answer that in here to the best of my ability, but I'm even, I'm still unsure. Okay. Um, But it is weird to like to go to a, what's the opposite of a higher up, a lower down. I don't know. And then be like, (laughs) I mean, literally. Yeah. And be like, I can't, (laughs) I just subordinate. And be like, I can't tell you what's going on, but they're being mean to me, and you have to trust me. On that. Like, <laughs> oh wait, that's true. So, wow, you know, yeah, that is weird. I guess yeah, not everyone totally in Congress now. Not everyone in Congress has top top secret clearance, right? But he had to be like, I need to tell you what's going on, because also what he was going to tell them is that there's the is, it I mean, was already breaking breaking the like how confidentiality. Did he- How far into the I'm telling you classified information can you go before it's too much? Like, because, I mean, he already I'm telling you now publicly what he's already said, which now Congress also has to know that, like, we're collecting spaceships, a.k.a. aliens are real. Yeah. But and then he's like, but forget about that. They were really mean to me. And the people are like, wait, (laughs) go rewind, please. What? (laughs) Yeah. I don't totally know what he because he also said he wasn't going to announce what the pushback was so i don't know what he's able to tell them yes it's just, it sounds like he's like andy bernard trying to get into the finer things club and like michael scott <laughs> isn't helping him <laughs> that's a, i think that's the same kind of thing it's like why yeah. would you let me in the club i'm pretty sure that's it <laughs> so i don't know if he was reporting them that like he was getting I mean, he was reporting that he was getting pushback. The official complaint was that he was getting pushed back, but it also feels like this was an excellent moment, which he took to tattletale that like, oh, and by the way, the program they won't let me into is also about yes spaceships. Like, So I'm kind of confused on like, what was the bigger point he was trying to tell them, you know? Yeah. Or was, were they, was he just mad that he wouldn't get in to the program and then they were like well we need to know what program it was to go talk to them and he was like i can't say like i don't know how it went um but he did say eventually quite a lot and uh he told them some classified information especially the intelligence community inspector general because that guy actually had a level of clearance he could go to him about okay um so he ended up saying there are deeply this is what he was telling them and what is now being whistleblown to us so this is some new information for everybody um he eventually said there are deeply covert programs that have recovered spacecraft intact these are all quotes intact and partially intact crafts of non-human origin (gasps) Uh, crafts of non-human origin which like what a fancy way to say that because you know after centuries of us wondering he should have just been like that's a motherfucking spaceship like it's a spaceship (laughs) like way to keep composure during this i love it then he said that this information was illegally being withheld from congress and so now (gasps) he's going to them to talk about it uh because the they were being intentionally sheltered from this information about these human non-origin spaceships They were being withheld from congressional oversight by the programs responsible because I guess these 
secret programs were trying to figure out if they could reverse engineer the machines themselves and make them part of our own military technology. Okay, I see. And then this is another quote from him saying that these UFO, I guess are called legacy programs, the way that they were hiding in plain sight, as we said, like how far do the layers go? He explained that to the, what he was aware of is that these UFO legacy programs have long been concealed within multiple agencies, nesting activities in conventional secret access programs without appropriate reporting to various oversight authorities. Oh, so, so they're hiding them. They're hiding them like a program within a program within a department within a program. That a- is sneaky because it's the government. You know, nobody's going to fucking figure it out for years. Like, just dig through all that. Well, how, like, think of the acronyms you have to get through. So, oh, <laughs> start running out of letters. Yeah. So he also, so he ended up filing an official complaint alleging that he suffered retaliation for disclosing, which again is vague, but that was apparently intentional. And what I think is interesting about this is one of the reasons he didn't get in trouble for coming out about this stuff, because you would think you're literally telling people some really intense fucking secrets right now. Like, I feel like I watch, you got to go. I watch scandal, like people get killed. Well, so this is a reason why he is protected is because... Uh, David, he was part of the A A R O. Okay. Okay. And that group, uh, their whole job was like working with UAP cases. And under President Biden, who just signed this into law in like December, right? They quote prepared many briefs on unidentified aerial phenomena for Congress while in government and helped draft the language on what a UAP is for the national defense authorization act. And part of this provision is that it states that any person with relevant UAP information can inform Congress without retaliation, regardless of any previous non-disclosure agreements. So even if you signed Government NDAs, you can go to Congress if you're hearing about something <gasps> that is, I don't know, I don't know how that's possible or how that's legal, but I, apparently I mean, it is. I feel like that's, uh, now again, I'm going to sound like a dummy, but um, like, um, what do you call it when they balance checks and balances where it's like, we have to have provisions in place so that like the government doesn't just like do exactly what it's been doing <laughs> you do exactly what it always does every day <laughs> but like t- in technicality wise there are supposed to be provisions that that allow for you know the people so to speak to like make sure they're being i don't know treated fairly and that people aren't hiding shit so well, i can y- see why that would be like i didn't know that existed but it makes sense well, you nailed it because uh, a lot of sources were saying this is a way for us to handle checks and balances. And ah, another see? source. I took seventh grade history or something. And a source, another source said it is to encourage potential witnesses to come forward. And the whistleblower legislation forbids any federal employee from retaliating against anyone uh-huh. providing authorized disclosure. Okay. But again, I've watched Scandal and I know. Oh, not scandal. What's the one? Um, House of Cards, and mm. people get pushed in front of trains and shit. I'm oh, like, yeah. you know, even though they're like, oh, it it it's illegal to do any to retaliate. It's like, well, I don't know. There's sneaky people out there who might call somebody and have you I mean, taken care of. But just again, look that's at just look television. at our country. I mean, there's technically checks and balances, but right. Fair <laughs> no, point. look at the last. I don't know, seven years. Seven so, thousand. Oh, just seven. Oh, I'm I'm ch- I'm channeling <laughs> I'm in on Trump. But yes, you're right. I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah, checks and balances. I get your point. Usually it does exist with good intentions and then people still like get around it. It but, just goes out of control. Right. And I wonder if they thought like, oh, well, how many people are really going to have like information Congress wouldn't already know? Like crazy so. amounts of yes, yeah, secret information. Right. Maybe they thought they could get away with it, or maybe they thought people with top secret clearance like would like have some sort yeah. of like code where they like uh, there is an understood thing where they wouldn't say anything. I don't know. Anyway, because the uh, I think he already knew that information, and he didn't even really plan on saying anything until he got retaliation when questioning about this program that he wanted to join, mm. and so because of a law that he helped write in uh-huh. that. 
that says like you cannot get retaliation for information on this or whatever that was why he filed the complaint because he was like i "I know i know better than anyone that like i shouldn't be getting retaliated on right Um, retaliate on me so the complaint was filed and thus began an official investigation where david has now been having very private conversations with intelligence committees Mm. and here are some of the problems with his story though because uh well let me tell uh, how I'm trying to remember how I wrote the notes and I feel like uh, I'm going to trust my gut. I wrote it a certain way. I'm going to keep it that way. That so, seems like a fun gamble. I know. Cause my gut's never right. Um, <laughs> At least yours isn't filled with ulcers, but um, <laughs> that wasn't even funny. Sorry. <laughs> oh my God. Are we in the Q and out episodes again? <laughs> I feel like I had half a glass of wine and I'm like, we, I'm a little <laughs> crazy today. <laughs> Well, so uh, one of the problems with him talking to, you know, Congress and now having these interviews done, um, because now that he's officially a whistleblower, they're looking for evidence. And one of the main issues is that he couldn't actually fully be straightforward with congressional staffers because they didn't have the same clearance he did, which we already talked about. So, okay, right. So maybe that's why people weren't upset about this being signed into law because they were like, well, you can't even tell them anyway. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm catching on. So another problem that he had, though, is that David gave Congress hundreds of pages worth of transcriptions of like classified information to like show his case. But he never had any like physical evidence of any of this. So it was all conjecture. It was just paperwork like. He could have typed it up himself. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, He didn't like bring in a spacecraft, you know? What? Uh, Why? And he wasn't invited to the fucking group. (laughs) They could smell it on him. They're like, you're going to fucking rat us out. (laughs) As for the intel that he did have outside of that one program. And I mean, he was already a a top secret clearance. He he still knew shit that was worth telling. He's such a top. He definitely does not use the bottom bunk, if you know what I'm saying. I'm I'm fucking not. I know. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Okay. As for the intel that he did have, David says that he knows multiple levels of UAP operations and the people involved that are also classified. And, like, that is equally juicy information as far as I'm concerned. Right. He said some of them had even, uh, some of these people had even approached him on their own with concerns they had about the program and it's <gasps> illegal wrongdoings. Uh Oh, so he's getting a little group here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so he said, he told Congress, it's not just me that like has this information. There are multiple people. There are locations that we've gone to. There are things that we've discussed. It's all classified and I can't reveal all this information to you, but I can, re- I can give it to the inspector general. <gasps> and so, he was able to list more details of the names and spaces instead of just saying, I have names and spaces. <laughs> and uh, some people in these programs even went to the inspector general after he did and confirmed a lot of what David was okay, talking about. Okay, because I was going to say, were they like, uh, leave me out of it? But they not participated. A, there weren't too many, but there were there were more than one. Like There was at least That's a couple good. people who were willing to come forward. And... So now I'm going to tell you what David, what like the craziest things we're now learning about that he whistle blew on. Yes. So David said that we have quite a few crafts, Um, a different anonymous source who did not want to be named spoke to some uh, like a journalist who said that we have somewhere near a dozen crafts (gasps) that like have been retrieved. That have been retrieved. Oh, boy. Uh, David also said there is a private aerospace company working with the program, and that's where the alien crafts are being stored. Whoa. This one one company agreed to be where they store their aircrafts. Holy shit. David also said that the U.S. has been competing with other countries for 80 years to understand UFO technology and to advance our own technology with it. So exploiting the the crafts. Okay. David 
also said that the crafts are made out of things that are not of our planet. He said this is based on the very specific properties that he was briefed on, including isotopic ratios that have to be engineered for it to be at those levels. He also said that it's just extremely strange. There are heavy atomic metals high up in the periodic table and arrangements that we don't understand. You know what the emergent properties are, but there is just a very strange mix of elements. Wow. Not only that, David also said that a lot of these crafts are the size of football fields. <sighs> and then my personal favorite part to this is not only do we have crafts, he said that we have bodies. I knew it! On Earth. There are aliens on Earth Fucking currently. Fucking knew it. Fucking knew it. He said, this is a quote from him. Well, I'm so wigged out. I feel like they're like <laughs> listening. You know what I mean? <laughs> Well, he this is, a, this is a quote from him. Naturally, when you recover something that's either landed or crashed, sometimes you encounter dead pilots. Naturally. It happens to us Naturally. all. Naturally. He said that he has seen some interesting photos and read some very interesting reports. And he was just going to leave it at that. Oh, my God. I love that they're trying to be like... Oh, they're trying to reverse engineer these spacecraft to make sure we have the highest technology. I'm like, well, these fucking spacecraft crashed and killed the pilots. So I don't know that we're trying, like, why are you trying to recreate this exact, I guess maybe just to see what the isotope ratio is or whatever the fuck you said earlier. You know, I, I grew up in DC and it was very normal for nobody to know what their parents did for a living because everyone did something with a clearance and they couldn't. And it was just normal. Like, Oh, what do your parents do? Oh, my mom does this and for the government. Yeah. Work for the government. Or you would just straight up openly say, I don't know what they do. And they're not allowed to tell me. And it was just very normal. So all of a sudden our parents were spies. And, uh, what it was is after all this time. Un- unfortunately i did not have get to say the cool phrase of i don't know what my mom does i knew no. what my, my mom but i there were friends that i grew up with my whole life where we would be like oh your dad's obviously a spy oh your mom's a spy ha, ha, ha. like we all know haha ha. and then like eventually i feel like we grew up and some of them probably like are gonna retire soon and be like by the way i was a fucking spy but yeah we'll never know anyway well we might know i don't know. know not yet not yet but uh, imagine I will... if they could say, my dad's a whistleblower. That's what my dad does. <laughs> you don't get a chance to say it because you're packing your bags. Um, but you know, Oh, true. <laughs> but, uh, you know, imagine being one of those kids in D.C. or some other like near Roswell. I'm sure there's kids who grew up with that. And they just had to say, oh, I don't know what my mom does for a living. And <sighs> someone, someone has a kid that's been saying that at school and they go to work and literally probably operate on these dead alien bodies. Oh my God. And they're like, what do I tell my friends that you do? And they're like, like I, I can't even come up with anything. Just say, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like they can't even come up with a better lie. Like I had one friend who always said, uh, or her dad always said, oh, I work for the government. I work for the government. And then we grew up and found out that like, yeah, he worked at the Pentagon, but he had like the most boring job there possible. Like oh, once, he, boo. once he retired, he was like, I was an accountant, but I couldn't say that because it was like the clients or something. But like, um, there just is wanted someone. to sound cool. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right. But there is someone out there who was like, at, who's like cooking dinner, having to keep in their own head. I operated on an alien or I collected a spacecraft today. I just wonder. Yeah, they're like making spaghetti bolognese and their hands are glowing green and they're like, hmm, (laughs) I'm just an accountant. That's all. Don't worry about it. (laughs) Actually, that would be the best twist is like even when you retire, you're still like sworn because it was so intense. That would be terrible. So now you have a second alias. I hope on your deathbed you get to say it or like through a Ouija board or something. That should be one of our listeners episodes. Did anyone on their deathbed, did any of our grandparents admit? Great idea. Anyway, there you go. Okay. Did anybody, any deathbed confessions? That would any, be such a good listeners episode. Did you ever have dinner and your dad's hands were glowing and you didn't know why? And- or that. <laughs> Those two things. He said that there, David said that they were, there were bodies. He saw interesting photos and read interesting reports. He also said, uh, kind of half vaguely, that the government, as you said earlier, would kill people to keep the secret. Um, okay. He, so I, he yeah, said, I, I, it's not just TV. It's real. Okay, great. Oh, 
He said, at the very least, I saw substantive evidence that white collar crime was committed, unfortunately. <sighs> I've heard some really un-American things I don't wish to repeat right now. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh. She's like, oh, my goodness. Okay. Oh, my, my. Um, and then the last thing that he really said was during an interview with News Nation Now. And David said, I think the logical fallacy uh, is... Because they're advanced, they're kind. We'll what? never really understand their full intent, and that's because we're not them. But I think what appears to me malevolent activity has happened. <gasps> that's oh, based no. on that's based on nuclear site probing activities and witness testimony. When asked if human beings have been injured or killed by non-human intelligence, uh, Grush avoided getting into details. He said, while I can't get into the specifics because that would reveal certain U.S. classified operations, oh, I was no. briefed by a few individuals on the program that there were malevolent events like that. Oh, so that's no. a yes. So that's so, a fucking yes. So yeah. Many people also say uh, that even though all of this sounds real crazy, David is worth trusting. Many of his like very senior officer cohorts have called him beyond reproach and having the strongest possible moral compass. Wow. And a lot of people still back him, but there is some like obvious skepticism. The main one being that this, all this information first came out in an article on the debrief.com. Okay. And according to Vanity Fair, the original article was originally passed to um, the by Politico, the New York Times, the Washington Post, and all of them said they didn't want the article. What? Um, now, some people could re- go back and say, like, oh, that's because they didn't want to reveal the, the truth and get in trouble or something. But a lot, there were, each of them had different valid reasons for why they didn't want to release it one of them was like they felt rushed to publish it at a certain amount of time before they could like really research and make sure all their facts were right like there was some of it felt a little odd and so they just kept passing on it and eventually it went to the debrief which happens to be a ufo friendly publication but (laughs) ufo friendly i didn't know that was a classification but i love it I think it's like, oh, well, they're not not world <laughs> weekly world news, but, you know, they're not New York Times either. <laughs> right, right, right. But the article was written by two very, like, renowned writers. One of them has spent almost 50 years at the New York Times. Okay. Um, his name was Ralph Blumenthal. And then the other author was Leslie Keen, who is an investigative science journalist who has written about UFOs before. And the two of them both collaborated on the 2017 report that leaked the videos that led to the <gasps> AATIP. Okay. So one of the other problems outside of it being passed on by like credible sources is that David and all of his quotes, even if he really has seen all of the stuff, he's only seen things or heard things. And uh, it just doesn't feel like he has any physical evidence he can offer anybody. But then again, even if he could talk about it, they would just say, oh, well, it's too classified to even hear anyway. So like, right. There's a back and forth on on like, do we really just trust this random guy? But he has incredibly high top secret clearance and people who are backing him. And like, him. why would he do this to risk his job and potentially his life? Well, that's a great point. So or other people say, other people say for him to just go to Congress, you don't just get to he, lie to Congress. Like, right. he, especially about something they so they kind of intense. They frown upon that, I think. It is illegal. And also, like... (laughs) I'm like, they frown upon it. (laughs) uh, But, like, the fact that he would go to Congress, risk his, like, clearance, his job, his pension, his friends, like, his his respect. His safety and well-being, like, yeah. Like, there's no reason to just go up and make a lie when, like, everything would be threatened. Exactly. Especially about something that big where you could be, like, killed for all you know about it. Yeah. Um... But there have been some senior officers that have openly backed David. Uh, One of them, who also has top clearance, his name was Jonathan Gray. But the uh, problem with that is that Jonathan Gray was apparently his alias because he wanted to be anonymous. And so now we don't know who he was. And now it's just like, it could be any random person saying I defend him. 
Plus, uh, all of his quotes said that he had heard of classified briefings, not that he'd actually seen a fucking oh. alien or a spaceship. So it was still vague. Um, and since he also never heard or saw anything personally and his name was shady, it just all feels kind of shady. Plus, David's vague uh, retaliation statement makes that hard to define because he won't talk about it. And even if he could, it's from classified programs that don't want to get involved. So they would probably just not say anything. So it's a lot of, you know, guess yourself what you think the truth is. Interestingly, Mm -hmm. only four days after whistleblowing, David's attorneys publicly ended their relationship with him. Uh Uh-oh. And so that could be shady in a few ways. It could be like, oh, well, did the government pay them off to, like, keep him from having a defense? And, like, so, I again. Or did they realize, like, on the other hand, like, playing devil's advocate, is it like, oh, they realized he was not trustworthy and they were like, never mind. You know, it's like you can't even argue one way or the other because it, like, could be a lot of things that they dropped him for. They put out a press release, but to me it felt kind of not clear it just said the whistleblower disclosure did not speak to the specifics of the classified information like it was like a bunch of like words over words mumbo felt- jumbo yeah and they said the substance of that information has always been outside the scope of our firm's representation so it's just like oh well we don't maybe it's that they didn't have enough classified information that they could even know what was going on to help him i don't know but david hmm. ended up leaving the government in april after all of this to quote advance government accountability through his public awareness and he is willing to speak to anyone in washington who has the clearance to hear the classified information so he's like i'm going to fucking keep my mouth open i'm telling people if they're willing to listen good for him and uh, as long as they have the clearance and meanwhile the house intelligence committee is being questioned and the house oversight committee is going to be investigated uh the date tba And, of course, the Pentagon has made a statement saying that the claims are unsubstantiated and the AARO has not had any evidence that alien life is real. So Yeah, well, of course they say that. Anyway, that is our our topical government whistleblower. I gotta say, they're lying. (laughs) Well, yeah, I agree. Allegedly. Allegedly. (laughs) Oh, um, I like it drives me crazy because it's like. I feel like there's so much coming out and then there's still people who are like, oh, no, that's crazy that you would believe in extraterrestrials. And I'm like, I feel like it's crazy to not believe that. But I I do, too. What? But. what do lest, I know, you know? lest we look back at that episode where I covered the Fermi paradox, where it's like, oh, exactly. St- statistically, us being alone is so small. But then the point of the paradox, which also throws me big time for a loop, which when you covered that episode, I feel like it like blew my mind. I still tell people about the Fermi paradox um, because then where are they? And it's yeah. like, uh, it's like the whole point of the paradox is like, Obviously, there must be more out there, but where the fuck are they? Sometimes I just have to pretend to myself that, like, you know how they say dogs can't, like, see the color green or something? It's like, they just don't have the sense yes. for it. I just have to yes. tell myself, like, we just can't see it. I think that a lot. It's like, we just don't understand a certain layer of reality or, like, we just can't access a certain dimension or... It, it's something beyond our scope of understanding. It's kind of like ghosts because uh, I, yes. I heard somebody say that uh, when someone dies, like it was their way of handling grief of like, oh, when someone dies, it's not that they're gone. You just lose like a couple senses like they're still there. But like all of a sudden you can't Aww. see them or hear them, but they're still chilling. And I mean, dogs and cats and animals clearly have those senses because they see shit they're looking at corners and looking around the room so but i but i feel like that with aliens too where i'm like well if it can happen with ghosts it can happen with aliens i just feel like uh, maybe i'm grateful that i don't have that sense because if i could i'd be screaming my head off every no you're that's a totally good point because it's like well i want to know but like do i Mm. maybe i just want to like put conjecture out there and just bullshit and and hope i never really find out i don't know um 
before we tell your story, can I show you something? Yes, always. I think you're going to like it. Hang on, I'm trying to set it up. Is this part I... of the show? Yeah. Well, oh, and it... I mean, it, it's about to be. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know if you wanted Jack to cut. Oh, no, no, no. Like, it's part oh, of, like, okay. other people can know about it. I just wanted to brag about Allison really quick. Oh. So, this was uh, my birthday gift. Show I me, wish I knew. Show me, show me, show I me. wish I knew the Gio! name. I'm sorry. Gio has been gone for, like, a week because I've been traveling and I haven't seen him until now. Oh. Oh, he's just looking for food on the floor. Come here. Wow, he literally didn't care about you the whole time. Zero percent. Come here. Well, to be fair, I dropped him off and didn't pick him up for a week. Come here. Oh, what a puppy. He's literally looking for food. He gives zero shits about me. Great. What an asshole. Come here. There he is. Come here. Oh, he's a baby. Come here. He's oh. my baby. Ah. He's my baby. No what wonder he doesn't want to participate. I miss him so much. He's my favorite napping buddy. Oh, it's a fuzzy little camera. face. There you go. Hi, Gio. Look, he's under his own portrait. <laughs> hmm. Look at you. His... Do you have fun at Derek's house? That's his dog sitter. Derek. <laughs> yeah, Derek. It's so funny. He sends the best photos. Hi. Okay. Anyway, I'm so sorry. Let's brag about your girlfriend. No, I, I, I trust me. <laughs> Geo is always number one. Uh, okay, I wanted to show you something that I think I really like. I wish I got, I knew the name. Allison can probably tell me the name, but it was an Etsy shop, and because I love, first of all, little things, yes, little trinkets, you do. and I love an apothecary. She got on Etsy a little <gasps> apothecary shelf. That is ah, things are falling. Of- Adorable. But there's like there's also things in the drawers and like do you see that? And like Yeah, I'm trying not to talk so the camera stays on you. Oh, okay. Well here, there's little things in the drawers. And then my favorite thing, there's like a little Ouija board and all the jars, and they all move so I can play with them. <gasps> it's like your own little dollhouse. I know. And your spooky dollhouse. My favorite part is one of the books on the shelf. You ready? Yeah. No, it's I, us. I. It's us. Do, 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 I do. almost jokingly said, "It's not our book, is it?" As a joke, and then it was our book. I wish it would focus better. Is there like you need a to do the like? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh right, there. Okay. So here's us. This is our little bookie, and she's cute. She's cute. This anyway, it makes me so thrilled because it means I made it into your little dollhouse. <laughs> it, it's like it's like we got trapped in there or something, but we've got a whole second life. Anyway, I I just it's sitting right here, and I forgot to show it to you last that week. Is but such a cute little gifty, I love it. So now I can play with it whenever I want, and I've got a teeny book, and I got the big book, and I oh can baby. Oh my gosh! Anyway, it's a let good know, time. Let me know if you want me to sign it. <laughs> okay <laughs> um anyway i didn't mean to steal from the show but i i thought people might also enjoy that I'll, oh it's so cute if we post a picture of it or something on the instagram i'll get the etsy person yes name. great idea do so do they make custom ones or was that just like al I, made the book separately no uh, they also made our book oh! <laughs> very exciting such stuff such a cute idea Anyway, uh, didn't mean to steal from our regular stuff, but also we got a Geo situation. Oh, we got Geo the bookshelf. Is, Geo is being very um, up in my business, but I guess I asked him for that. He's so sweet. He's so sweet. He's, oh. um, at all, it's also weird because he smells like someone else's house, you know? Mm, it's like he's cheating yeah. on you. Yeah, it feels a little bit like, I'm like, where's that perfume on your collar from? Derek wears perfume. Okay, Derek. Yeah, no, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Um. Okay. Okay. Gio's over it. Bye. Um. Bye, Gigi. All right. Should I tell you a story? Yeah. Okay. Also, I don't think I've shown you my like little lap desk that I have. <gasps> it, it's my little cool like western. You know how I love cowboys and cowboy ghosts. I bought you like, are... this little. I know you've always liked cowboys, but you are going through like a new style phase recently 
It is. And I, I think it's just like to like experiment, you know, I think it makes sense because you've always been a cactus girly. And like, so that's, I think it's that's an easy true. transition. That's true. Know? Yeah. And I like kind of, um, oh, cacti. Yeah. I was like, what do I like? Yeah. <laughs> cactus. That's it. All right. You nailed it. I, I can't think of anything else. Um, I don't know. There's something about it. I just, uh, it just spoke to me, you know? Oh, um, Hmm. the story doozy yeah Mm -hmm. and i don't know if it's just me i mean i'm sure it's not just me but for some reason this one like i was like oh this will be an interesting case and then it was so it like really screwed me up for a little bit oh really yeah more than normal yeah was there anything new to it or were you just in a particular mood that's a good question there there is definitely quite a twist that from an outside perspective looks very like whoa that's fascinating and horrible obviously but then when I started researching it and like watching videos on it I was like this is just making me really sad (laughs) so Hmm. you know I'm not sure Um, I'm gonna refill my wine before I tell you and I I I just you know obviously this doesn't need to be said but I'll say it anyway that like all our stories are all yes. my stories at least mo- for the most part are very sad um and often like very fucked up and i never want to compare and contrast them in that way or rank them so to speak but sometimes they just hit me different you know um but this is the story of Ryan Waller and okay i'm feeling like probably you don't know this because i didn't know it is that true i definitely don't know who Ryan Waller is okay so because I never know what you just accidentally stumbled upon on like um one of That's your fair. rabbit holes one night, um, which is always a pleasant surprise when you're like, I know about this. And I'm like, you probably know more than I do. Look, after the Duggars, I uh, I, I think I've officially checked <laughs> out on ever being helpful again. You knew the Jared Fogle, too, a bit like you knew stuff about oh, that. That's true. Too. That's true. Oh, and since we just brought both those up and I literally said, if this comes up in this episode, I'll mention. Otherwise, it'll be next episode. I'll just throw it out there now that um, Eva and our social media uh, manager, Megan, pointed out a really uh, interesting thing, which is that a lot of our listeners or some of our listeners who are more, you know, uh, I guess, aware of like updated terminology, that kind of thing. Um, mentioned that the phrase child pornography is a phrase we're trying to get away from. And I know I use that probably quite a bit in um, both, both the, yeah, yeah the, the, the uh, Jared Fogle and the Duggars. And so I just want to point out, and I didn't, I wasn't aware of this. And so thank you to everybody who apparently very kindly, like, just let us know. Um, and you didn't know either, right? Is this I new to both of us? I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't either. I don't know. Maybe Eva knew, but I wasn't aware. But apparently, and it makes total sense. Like the second Eva explained it, I was like, well, duh, because pornography is a consensual like act form of film or like a, yeah, yeah. exactly. And so you obviously can't have child pornography. Um, and so the phrase, I guess, is child abuse imagery is the phrase that that's kind of uh, more accurate. So, you know, apologies for for saying that incorrectly, but, you know, we're all learning together. So fun fact for all of us to learn now. Right. Well, maybe not fun, but a fact. It's I mean, to be honest, it's the most fun fact, fun fact of all our fun facts, because like none of our fun facts are fun. And the whole point is they're fucked up. So it actually a, really nails sure. it. <laughs> it's certainly a topical fact for us, since we'll probably unfortunately be talking about it in the future. <laughs> yeah, It's very relevant. And I feel like like on a platform like this i feel so fortunate that i get to learn things like this and then share them with people because i i i imagine a lot of people out there haven't thought twice about it you know i we are very lucky that we have microphones and get to scream things as soon as we learn them into Mm -hmm. the into the void (laughs) so like harry reed former president who also (laughs) like hand couriered uh al-qaeda to um, <laughs> saddam the hussein or whatever yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know um all the intelligent things we say but yeah just an <laughs> fyi since both of those episodes just got brought up but that is not relevant for my story today the ryan waller case i'm just gonna get into it Em, it's been a couple days since i really went through these notes i hope it doesn't like fuck me up again the same way maybe i was just really tired i don't know 
drink some you wine. Let, you let me. Uh, on it. Thank you. That w- the whole point of the show, and that's why we drink. We drink because we are escaping the situation. Escapism. That's what I'm doing. So Ryan Waller, he was born February of 1988 and grew up slightly north of Phoenix, Arizona. Mm-hmm. He had a knack for music. He taught himself guitar. He was one of those people, I know a couple of them, who could hear a song and then just like play it. Oh, what a skill. To be that person. Like I would give so much because the amount, fif- 16 years of piano lessons, I can barely play like row, row, row your boat. Like it's just ridiculous. It is such a, I mean, talk about like a, a bar trick or yes. a party trick in general. Or a TikTok trick trend like i remember that dad who could do that yeah that girl who would like post her dad doing it. i was always just so amazed and i had a friend who could do that and it drove me crazy because i'm like what p- who's your piano teacher she's like i don't take piano lessons and i was like i'm gonna kill you it's like don't gatekeep me please yeah let's just like back the fuck off you know what i mean <laughs> i know you're gonna be a tiktok star one day okay yeah and so, also if you're trying to be a tiktok star and you have that skill there's your fucking skill fucking there's- go for it because i'll watch it all day every day yeah um, so he wanted to pursue music after high school. He was really big into music, very talented. And uh, now fast forward to 2006. Ryan is 18 years old. He's living in Phoenix, Arizona with his girlfriend, Heather Kwan. Mm-hmm. Now, Heather was born in 1985. She and Ryan had known each other since they were little kids. They'd grown up together. And at this point, Heather was 21. And she had graduated from Glendale Community College and was a pre-law student at oh. Arizona State University. Incidentally, where I'm going tomorrow, Tempe, to <laughs> read one-star reviews of Arizona State and Glendale Community College. Look so at, everyone can do something there. <laughs> full circle. <laughs> <laughs> so she was a local volunteer with Big Brothers Big Sisters. And um, I mean, here's a spoiler. Her obituary later oh. read, I know. From a very young age, Heather seemed to sense when another was hurting and gave her friendship to those who needed it most. She was a strong-willed individual who not only lived life, but loved it. So Mm. just like a a beautiful soul. And it was sometime around Christmas of 2006. And the date itself, like the specific day, is a little controversial. We're going to get to that. But it was around Christmas of 2006. Ryan and Heather were at home enjoying the evening when they heard a loud noise at the back door. Okay. I hate that immediately. Everything goes to shit. It turned out to be a man named Richie Carver and his father, Larry Carver, breaking in through the sliding glass door of Mm. the home. If you have a sliding glass door, and I know a lot of you do, fucking put something in there, a big wooden stick or something so people even if they break the lock can't open it i yes but i am also not trying to terrify you but a lot of sliding glass doors are just glass if you really wanted to get in i'm sorry what do you mean a sliding glass door couldn't you just kick it through oh yeah but at least in that way everyone would either hear it or uh, you know oh you have like you have a longer chance of getting away i just don't like a lot of times people can pick those sliding locks and like just sneak on in you know at or you least, can just yank it hard enough and it'll or come. yank it and break the lock at least put like something there to like keep it i mean those doors are pretty fucking solid and i know some of you are saying i ran through one of those and broke it once because i'm you know we've all been there but <laughs> at least if you have like something in place you know yeah you've got at, at least 30 more seconds of time at or least something. a little bit more awareness if someone's trying to break in So they heard a loud noise, and it was a man named Richie Carver, his father, Larry Carver. They were breaking in through the sliding glass door. Now, according to police and the media, Richie was Ryan's former roommate. Oh. But that's wrong. Oh. Because there is a lot of misinformation that circulated about this case. Basically, what the media did was, which it's so wild to me because you were just talking about how the media was like i don't know we don't have enough information about these ufo stories to release a report meanwhile on this story they're just taking literal interrogation Anything? so they they were watch they they had the clips of the interrogation like footage and they just used that as fact so like Oof. they had interrogation videos of police interviewing suspects mm. and they used okay. that as factual information which is like cool 
not it. That's not it, you know? It's possible to report on anything, apparently. You, yeah, you could say anything in an interrogation room. That doesn't mean it's a valid fact that the news should be printing. But any in any case, um, the media used these interviews for information and then published them without confirming or corroborating anything. And anyway, in 2021, uh, there was a channel on YouTube called This Is Monsters. And they published an hour-long video called Searching for Justice, the Ryan Waller Story. Mm. Now, this documentary, it's basically a YouTube documentary, features interviews with Ryan's father and and essentially seeks to clear up misinformation that was spread about the case. And there is a lot of information. A lot of the stuff in these notes came from that video. So if you want like a, a more visual way to you know learn about this case go check out this is monsters um they did a really good job on this case ryan's dad explained that richie and ryan were never roommates in fact the reality was richie the one who was breaking in used to live in that apartment before ryan and heather moved in oh okay so the previous tenant yes exactly that's why people probably mix it into roommate so no yes ish it it was said in an interrogation that they were roommates i just don't want to give too much away got it okay you've given it, nothing away i don't okay, know what's good. going on it was on. just not a i'm sorry it was just not a reliable <laughs> fact to say they were roommates okay but they were former tenants richie was a former tenant of this apartment okay so Richie has a sealed juvenile record stretching back to his early teenage years. He'd been arrested for assault, armed robbery. He served four years in prison for a stabbing. And his father, Larry, had been arrested several times for domestic violence, assault, weapon misconduct, and theft, which then makes me a little bit sad because it's like a father-son. The mm -hmm. father has such a long record, including domestic assault. So you know the son grew up with this and is now almost i mean i was gonna say almost a partner in crime a literal partner in crime to his literal. own father yeah and it, it so that's kind of a bummer so once heather and ryan had moved into this place richie was not living there anymore they moved in with their roommate alicia and richie actually visited the apartment twice uh and he asked if he had any mail that might have been delivered to his old address and they were like no thanks for hmm. stopping by so yeah, go away go away my guess is he was kind of just scoping out who lived there mm. seeing what they might have had you know he knew the access points to the apartment he had lived there one night this was before the break-in ryan and heather actually caught richie in their backyard oh ew scoping around snooping casing case in the joint and guess what he claimed he was looking for the sliding glass door what literally you're never gonna guess it he claimed he was looking for a four foot long iguana that had escaped when he lived in the house that was like my third guess <laughs> okay fair <laughs> i probably should have given you another two chances you would have gotten it yeah uh yeah. yeah he said that there was an iguana that lived there when he was in the house and it had escaped so he was just looking for his iguana which is like you know what go home Okay. You're full you're full of shit. Go home. <laughs> why Sad are you in the back why are you in the backyard like months later? Go yeah. away. I can't imagine my pet escaping at a new house and now going to the old house thinking, oh, maybe it followed my scent all the way to my old home or something. Yeah, and al and also like put up a fucking poster outside. Yeah. <laughs> right. Why don't you knock on the door and say, Have you seen a giant iguana in your backyard? That's mine. Go to your current yard and go, Iguana <laughs> Iguana iggy yeah anyway. well i guess he had a different method i guess i guess he did and it didn't work so that's unfortunate fast forward to now richie is breaking into ryan's house and he has a gun oh shit ryan and heather are just having a relaxing evening right near christmas they hear a noise they get up they go toward the sliding glass doors to see what's going on Richie pulls out his gun and shoots Ryan directly in the head. Oh! Yeah. Oh, I thought Ryan was going to... Okay. Keep going. 
Ryan falls back. The two men barge in past him. Richie turns and shoots Ryan in the head a second time to make sure he is dead. Mm. At this point, Heather is considered a liability. She has witnessed everything in front of her, and she is shot and killed as well. Mm. The men take guitars, electronics, whatever they can grab, and make their getaway. And the media also, just like a side note, said they, that these people stole several guns from Ryan. But it turns out Ryan only had one handgun, which was a gift from his grandfather, and he had never actually used it, and mm. it wasn't even stolen. So, like, that information was also completely incorrect. But apparently the neighbors heard nothing, which is pretty shocking to me being an apartment and shooting off several bullets but in any case there were no reports of disturbances that came in that day ryan and heather were supposed to go to a family christmas dinner on the night of christmas day december 25th but they didn't show up and that's when ryan's dad don waller tried calling ryan several times but it kept going to voicemail so he's starting to get nervous and he and his wife go to his son ryan's house But nobody answers the door. So Don calls the police and says, I need you to conduct a wellness check. I don't know where my son is. He was supposed to see us on Christmas Day. And we've been calling, calling. Nobody's picking up. But since it wasn't an emergency, as far as everyone knew, they had to wait for a call back. So Don and his wife went to get coffee. And in the meantime, uh, Alicia, the roommate, Mm. got home. Oh, shit. She walked straight to her bedroom and did not even see Oh my god. Ryan or Heather. Oh my god. She I don't know what the layout of the apartment is, but I'm like, how did you not notice? I know, right? It's like I I imagine as someone who's very oblivious, like I imagine it's just they had run to the sliding glass door maybe in the back and she just went in and went to her bedroom and didn't look, but whatever the case, she just did not notice that they were there. So when Don returned, the police called back and said they would be there at midnight. And so Ryan's parents sat in their car and just waited for hours. Mm. So all said, it took roughly three to four hours for the wellness check to begin uh, from the time that Don called. So police finally arrived and they shined a flashlight into a window and believed they saw a body inside. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, they did. Sure did. So legally, they could have entered and, in my opinion, should have entered the home immediately on the suspicion that somebody was either dead or injured. But instead, they ignored protocol and filed a warrant to enter the home, which is like the most jarring thing to me, because as someone who lives in Kentucky and when the Breonna Taylor story happened in in 2020, where Louisville police just like fucking burst into her home and... Mm -hmm just shot her because and it was the wrong address and now meanwhile it's like they see a body on the ground but they're like well let's call the judge and see if we're allowed to go in and it's like excellent point right it's like where's the fucking whatever anyway so they wait for a warrant to come in and it was another hour before this warrant comes through and then they get a locksmith to come and unlock the door And so when they couldn't get the front door unlocked, they tried another back door and they couldn't get through that door either. Then they're at the door. They're trying to figure out how to pick the lock and the door opens. It's Ryan. Okay. I know. I know he's supposed to be dead, but this this goes back to my. I was you, like, I, you had a yeah. You're. I an was empath. like, oh, they're yeah. No. <laughs> they're. I was like, they're gonna shoot him in the head. I thought he was the main character of the story. Okay, so he's been just like, hang on. So was this a like that last story you told where he had a head injury and was just walking around covered in blood and didn't know what was going on, or did he just survive and he was lying there this whole time? We don't know. How. He couldn't tell us? You'll see. Okay. Hmm. So. They, so he's he, there. He he's answers there. the door. He is alive. He's conscious. His left eye, ha- he has a black eye and his eyes swollen shut. And he uh-huh. seemed confused and disoriented. 
And so they, they, they enter the home. They find Heather. <clears throat> She's dead on the couch where she had been a, presumably lying and or sitting, and they shot her. They remove Ryan from the home and handcuff him, put him in the back of a police car. And Don is there like, wait, I was just trying to get a wellness check. Now there's, you know, uh, they're arresting my son, but police will not let him near his son. They said Ryan was fine. He just had a black eye. We're taking him in to... Black eye? He got shot in the head. Twice. Yeah. yeah. He wasn't covered in blood. No. You can't tell me. Okay. I don't, th- I don't believe so. Okay. So they put him in the back of the police car, and he sits there for nearly four hours. Paramedics arrived to treat Heather, but she had been dead for two days. After confirming her death, paramedics left without ever even examining Ryan, let alone treating him. Mm -hmm. He insisted he had been shot in the eye, but nobody would listen to him. And an officer told him if he had been shot in the head, he would be dead. Okay. I already don't like him. I don't like the cop. The officer? Yeah. Oh, certainly not. Despite his visible injuries, uh, police transported Ryan to the station to be immediately interrogated instead of a hospital. And even though they didn't believe Ryan's story of being shot, they were still legally required to give him medical attention for the visible injuries he had, but they just skipped over that. Okay. So the police, yeah, yeah, it's really bad. So the police were sure at this point Ryan had killed Heather. And there was just a black eye from a fight they had gotten into. And he was just making some crazy story up about getting shot to, like, cover up murdering his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So they took his clothes as evidence and immediately began the questioning. And off the bat, it was very fucking clear. This story makes me so mad that something was seriously wrong. Because in the interrogation videos, which, side note, once again, are the ones the media used to report, quote unquote, Mm -hmm. facts Mm -hmm. in the interrogation videos... Ryan is sitting up. He has his feet up on the chair. He's leaning his head in his hand. He looks like he's about to fall asleep, and he keeps, like, holding his own head up like he can't even sit up properly. Oh, my God. This guy got shot all the way through. Twice. Something happened. Twice. Something. I don't know what it is medically, but I believe a bullet went in and then out of his head. You are correct. Okay. His eye is so bruised and swollen that, like, if you look at the screen, it looks just like a big black spot. Like, that's how bad. The like, he doesn't is. have an eye? Yeah, literally. Like, he's been just shot in the fucking eye. Wouldn't you, wouldn't, wouldn't you know? I don't know how you could look someone in the hole where your eye's supposed to be and say, you didn't get shot in the eye. You're full of shit. So, hmm. in the video, this is horrible. You can even see a hole where one of the bullets entered through his nose. Oh, oh my God. I- and it's like, if we can see this f- on footage from 2006, presumably the police could fucking see it. Yeah, a pixelated CCTV right? can see it. I'm pretty we sure. all know those interrogation cameras are shitty. Let's just go right into this with an ACAB, shall we? Because, like, I, how do you, unless, like, steer me the other direction if I'm on the wrong side of the story. But I don't know how you can look at someone shot and then be like, well, not even a medical clearance is necessary. It's it's such a gross mishandling of this entire situation because even if he had murdered his girlfriend and gotten punched in the eye, legally he's required to get medical attention. Mm-hmm. And like that is the farthest thing from what happened. But even if they believed, oh, you asshole, you killed your girlfriend and you got injured, we don't care. It's like... I, I, I don't know. I mean, we see it all the time with, like, people being hurt and then being like, oh, yo, you're fine. And then... But, they, but then we also don't even know for sure that he did it yet. It's like, I, like it'd be one thing... It wouldn't even, but I it could see them, like, having some sort of weird, like, apprehension to helping him if they knew for sure he was, was a murderer. Good point. But, like, they don't even know that. Like, this could be, for all you know, someone who was, I don't know, a victim of getting shot in the fucking getting eye. Getting attacked? Right. That's a great point. They don't even fucking know. They just think he did it. 
So it's really disturbing. The footage is really disturbing. Uh, maybe watching it is what fucked me up. I'm not sure, but it's just upsetting. And he seems totally disconnected from the situation, from the surroundings. Um, he's either in shock and like, I'm no doctor, but he's either in shock or just like has a brain injury from getting shot in the fucking head. But for some reason, he's totally disconnected from reality. He's confused. He's disoriented. He's in pain. And the detective, Paul Dalton, began with simple questions like, what grade did you complete in school? And Ryan, like, literally couldn't answer. Like, he was so disoriented, he couldn't answer. Disoriented or his brain got or shot? Or shot in the head. Right. Exactly. So he continually he continually made small confused sounds like grunts and moans and he would give Oh my god. It, I know it, it like That's physically heartbreaking. it hurts me. Yeah. Okay. Well, now I know why you were so fucked up after right? the story. It made me so upset, like physically hurting. It, well, cuz you're watching someone who needs help and can be helped and isn't desperately, getting help. Desperately. Desperately. Like, oh, it it hurts to watch. And he kept giving conflicting answers to small questions. So, like, the detective asked Ryan if he had a girlfriend. Ryan said no. When asked if he knew Heather and what her last name was, Ryan said, the one who lives there right now? I don't know what she's trying to use as her last name. Like, he's just... Like, he's obviously not okay. Yes, he's not okay at all. I don't know what she's trying to use as her last name. That's a string of words, my friend. That he, you're... It means nothing. It's mumbo jumbo. It sounds like like that's the equivalent to someone like having a stroke or something yes, and like, yes. like just kind of piecing words together. Just saying things in response that don't actually mean anything that aren't correct. It's like when someone's sleep talking and you're like, the things you're saying just don't make sense. It's, yeah. it, that's exactly what it is. And when he when the officer asked what is Heather's age, he said 16 or 17. And she's 21. Oh, well, and I'm sure that fucking looked great for him. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. So the detective asked, is she a white girl? And Ryan said, yes. But the answer was no. So, like, he just is just saying things in response. It's like a muscle memory. He's just responding for the sake of responding. When asked what happened to his face, he said, I don't know. Heather must have hit me. Like, he just literally at this point doesn't even remember. I can't believe these were used as. Yes. And then these are used as fucking sources. Yeah. Like, wow. Wow. He says, it was an accident. I don't remember why. His answers obviously made no sense, and he seemed barely awake, but the detective kept pressing him. And between questions, he just kept telling the detective he wanted to go home and go to bed. And it was during this interview that some misinformation began to spread. So Detective Walker suggested that Richie was Ryan's former roommate. And Ryan said, yes. Because okay. he has a bullet in his fucking head. And he, he is also confused. Said, he also said, I don't know my girlfriend. And also she's 16. Yes, precisely. Like, uh, this is the information that's being used and publicly shared. So the detective also said he had heard that Ryan had guns in the house. And Ryan was like, yes. And again, oh. he had the one gifted from his grandfather that he had never used. And it wasn't even stolen. I looked him up, by the way, and that eye is incredible. It's terrifying. That's, I don't mean to keep interrupting you, but like, I'm, no, I'm, you're a, not. I'm officially on the angry train with you because it's just so sad. It's upsetting. It's like deeply upsetting. So the entire interrogation was barely coherent. When Detective Walker asked Ryan what the highest grade he completed in school was, he said B, like the grade B. Oh shit. Yeah. Okay. He's just responding. Like instead of saying How like, did how did nobody hear this and think like this guy's not in his right mind? Exactly. He sounds like he's at least concussed. Exactly. Great question. So it was hours and hours of questioning. And finally Ryan started to put some memories together. He told the officer that Richie and Larry Carver had tried to break in and that they had hit him. At one point, he said they were armed with bows and arrows, but then he corrected himself to tell detectives they were revolvers, not bows and arrows. Mm -hmm. The detective said, so they had revolvers, and then what happened? And sounding exasperated, Ryan said, then they shot us both, which is literally what happened. 
Yeah, so at least he got one thing right eventually, and I wonder if they even used it. Like, he, they opened the door, and he said, I've been shot. And they're like, get in the fucking police car. Remember, he sat in that police car for four hours before they even interrogated him. I even wonder what would have happened if he died in that car, if the cops would have even gotten in trouble. Well, I mean, probably not, but I, we'll whatever. get to it. So the detective said, if you were shot in the eye with a revolver, you wouldn't be here right now. You'd most likely be dead. Most likely. But, most likely. Great Most point. likely. There's a chance you could be here. Didn't even think about that. Great point. What a fucking stupid person to say anything like that. What a fucking dumbass. But finally, (laughs) this detective started to realize, hey, something seems off. Thanks, MacGyver. You really nailed it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. What a fucking... I almost said Shakespeare. What I meant to say was Sherlock Holmes. But, you know, both apply. So he left the room for a moment. And interestingly enough, when he comes back, he has a friendly, very gentle tone. And he says, oh, I'm going to uncuff you. The fire department is on their way to take a look at you and your injuries. Because clearly somebody said, hey, idiot, if you keep going down this path. He's going to die in your care. And we're going to be fucked. Or he noticed something was wrong and was like, oh, shit, I have to backtrack. He didn't notice something was wrong. I promise. (laughs) He either did and ignored it or someone else noticed and said, you got to do something about this. So he comes back. He's like a totally different person. He's very calm, caring. He says the fire department is on their way. Ryan says, I don't want to go to the hospital. I just want to go to bed. And the officer says, that's the problem. If you have some kind of head injury, you shouldn't be sleeping. So Ryan is transported to the hospital where it was discovered that an infection had begun in his head as a result of two bullet wounds. Mm -hmm. He had been shot in the nose and the bullet entered on the right and exited on the left and then entered his left eye. Mm -hmm. The first shot left the exit wound visible in the interrogation tapes. (gasps) Yeah. So... The second shot entered behind his eyes and injured his skull. And this infection had to be treated before Ryan could undergo surgery. So the surgery itself didn't happen until the 28th. This is like days later. Oh, my God. Ultimately, his orbital socket was completely destroyed. There were several pieces of bone in his brain. He had to have both eyes and part of his brain removed during surgery. Both of his eyes? Yeah. Oh, this poor guy. I know. He also had a broken jaw, which was not caused by the bullets. Guess what? Mm. Guess who caused it? I don't even want to fucking say it. Yeah. I already know. According to Ryan's dad, when police arrived and initially told Ryan to get on the ground, Ryan was confused and didn't comply because he had been shot in the head twice and watched his girlfriend get killed. In the police report, they said they led Ryan to the ground and then used a, quote, pressure point in Ryan's jaw to force him to comply. And they broke his fucking jaw. I really hope whoever this cop was is just fucking rotting in jail. He's not. Well, well, that's how the world, that's how the world spins, apparently. I was going to say plot twist, but it's like the least plot twist of all plot twists. Yeah. Normal sentence. Normal sentence. (laughs) Normal sentence. He's fucking living his life right now. Normal sagu into the rest of the story. Um, So Don, Ryan's dad, believes that police used excessive force and injured Ryan further. Ultimately, Ryan spent 35 days in the hospital. Police never visited or asked any questions about the shooting. Police never searched for Richie or Larry Carver, even though Ryan said Richie and Larry were the ones who broke into our house and shot us. I, that, that, that part just gets me. When Ryan got home from the hospital, police interviewed him and finally arrested Richie. And a few days later, Larry's wife turned Larry into police after he confessed the crime to her. So it was June 2008 when Richie Carver was convicted of felony murder, burglary, aggravated assault, and misconduct involving weapons, and he was sentenced to life in prison. Just before Larry, the dad's trial, his wife recanted her statements and refused to testify against her husband in court, citing marital privilege. 
Wow. Are you telling me the one who's married to someone that's known for domestic violence is all of a sudden being silenced ding into dong, saying ding, anything? Ding, 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 ding. You just nailed it. So without her testimony of Larry's confession to her, prosecutors had to drop the case against Larry. But Heather's family obviously did not accept that outcome, and her parents, her brother, her aunts, her uncle, her cousins, they rallied on her behalf. And the appeal that they created eventually developed something called Heather's Law, which compels a defendant's spouse to testify if the spouse has voluntarily disclosed information to police about a serious crime. So basically, if somebody comes to police and says, I have information, my husband did it. They can't then backtrack and use marital privilege mm, okay. as, an ex- as, a, as a way out of testifying. Basically, Heather's Law says, if a defendant's spouse tells police they have information and discloses that information... They've opened the door. They've opened the door and they can't close it. Exactly. So the state fought a pretty intense legal battle to try and apply Heather's law retroactively to Heather's own case. And ultimately, Larry Carver was reindicted and he was convicted of first degree murder. Oh, wow. So at least there was that success, you know, in this whole thing. He was convicted of first degree murder, attempted first degree murder, burglary and aggravated assault. This was in 2011. He was also sentenced like his son to life in prison. But, of course, the story was not over because we still have the story of Ryan. Ryan Waller spent the rest of his life disabled due to his severe, severe injuries. He suffered from seizures, and he eventually succumbed to one of his seizures in 2016. Oh, my God. So, after all this, still he passed. Yeah. His family filed a lawsuit against the city of Phoenix and its police department. Things got, of course, very messy. First of all, investigators now claim that Ryan and Heather were attacked on December 23rd, uh, which would mean that Ryan was alone and injured for two full days uh, oh, before off. help arrived, which is basically saying any complications resulting from delayed treatment wouldn't be the police's fault. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Even if that is the case, you fucked up so hard, so big. It's just so gross. Like, who are and we like, kidding? And you know the cop responsible for all that doesn't fucking lose a wink of sleep. Not a wink. They just are like, we did the right thing and we... Fuck it. But, of course, there is a problem in this quote-unquote fact that police have stated, which is that Ryan's family insists that Ryan and Heather were attacked on December 25th, on Christmas Day. Because... Ryan had been at his parents' house on December 23rd for, like, the whole day. Yeah, but whatever. But fucking whatever, <laughs> that right? That doesn't count. And then could, okay. that night, December 23rd, a pizza delivery driver handed a pizza, a pizza to Ryan and Heather that evening, December 23rd. And he, and he doesn't remember two bullets in someone's face? That's right? That's interesting. He saw both of them alive. This yeah, but you know what driver. that cop can say? He also didn't see a, two bullets in that guy's head at any time. So, like, I guess it could have been there, and the pizza delivery guy just missed it, too. Precisely. It's too bad the p- pizza delivery driver doesn't have paramedics on hand who could do a quick check on him, you know? Mm-hmm. So, Heather's initial official autopsy stated that she died be- sometime between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. on December 25th christmas day in fact heather's date of death on her gravestone is the 25th as well wow. in the interrogation which took place around 1 a.m on december 26th so only hours later detective walker asks ryan what happened last night why would they come on christmas day so he's even acknowledging that these guys showed up on the 25th. Like the detective who's interrogating him is like, wait, but this happened last night. Why would they come on Christmas Day? Mm. And by the way, I'll fucking tell you, Detective Waller, because it's an apartment and people are probably at their family's houses. So places are fucking empty. 
And that's why I think nobody heard the bullets, because it's an apartment complex for young people who are probably on Christmas Day going to visit their families. They're not mm-hmm. at home. Yep. Of course, wow. that's why they broke in that day. Oh. And if that is the case, then Ryan's care obviously was critically delayed by police in the time it took for them to respond to the wellness check, file a warrant, call a locksmith, leave him in the police car for four hours, and then interrogate him for three more hours. And this was like deeply precious time that could have been crucial to his recovery and treatment. But Detective Walker and the police department, who has rallied behind him, now insist that Ryan and Heather were attacked on the 23rd and that their delay in treatment by the police made no difference. Mm. He would have died either way. So Ryan's dad claims that the date was even changed on Heather's autopsy report, that the police went back and adjusted the date just to, like, back up their own story. (sighs) Detective Walker also insisted under oath in a deposition that he did not realize the severity of Ryan's injuries or that he needed medical attention. However, on the interrogation tapes, when Ryan asks once again to go home and sleep, guess what Detective Walker says? He it's says, Christmas or something. <laughs> he says, you should go to the doctor is where you should go. Oh, well. Interesting. Didn't get to. Interesting. Not right away. And you know what Ryan said? Hmm. Me? Why? This? And then points to his eye and says, is it bad? Like, he is so disoriented. And Detective Walker responds saying, I'd say that's really bad. If you have a concussion, you don't need to sleep. So So he at least knows knows this man has a head injury. And yet didn't stop interrogating him. No. Like someone who's not making sense. And you're like, I'll ask another official question. And and also had no plans to get him checked out medically. Not until he was done answering things wrong. Yeah, precisely. So Detective Walker was clearly aware during this interrogation that Ryan was badly injured. And whether he believed he was shot is just semantics at this point, right? Like, it's like, oh. it doesn't matter if the bullet fucking went if he saw this guy and was like he has a head injury it doesn't matter that you don't know he was shot twice like what matters is you know he's ill and injured. he's not right he's not he's right. not right like what matters is it doesn't matter who shot him whatever you need to get him medical attention so it pisses me off to be like uh, that he's like oh i didn't know he was shot it's like well you knew he was brain damaged so isn't mm-hmm. that enough yeah Ugh. So it was obviously technically protocol to have Ryan evaluated by medical professionals. Obviously, that did not happen. In the end, the lawsuit against the Phoenix police was dismissed. Why? I'm unsurprised, sadly. Not sure, but also unsurprised. Uh, that was only weeks before it went to trial. So mm. on a YouTube video about their son, the Waller family commented the following. This was just over a year ago. <clears throat> For all of you that have asked if we filed a lawsuit against the Phoenix police, we did. We had a $15 million lawsuit against the city of Phoenix. The lawsuit went on for nearly three and a half years. And just three weeks before the trial was set to start, the city filed a motion for dismissal with the court because they stated they had found a brain expert that said the six-hour delay in Ryan's treatment probably didn't make a difference in his outcome, and he would have had the same damage had he received treatment right away or six hours later. I paid an expert witness brain surgeon a $10,000 retainer, and he would have testified something a whole lot different. He would Mm. have testified that when a brain is bleeding, it is swelling, and when it is swelling, catastrophic damage is being done, so every minute was critical. Yeah. This motion went before Judge Robert Budoff and he dismissed our case. There is no doubt in my heart or mind that he was paid off. There is no way that this should have ever been dismissed. There were many other issues besides the six hour delay. What about pain and suffering? What about extremely mm-hmm. irresponsible negligence? The city of Phoenix attorneys, police officers, and detectives involved in this case were collectively corrupt in getting this case dismissed and swept under the rug. We were three weeks from getting our day in court when magically they got this case dismissed because they knew if this had gone to a jury, there is no way they would have had a chance. 
but rather than take responsibility for their horrible mistakes, they showed they are not much better than the two men that shot Heather and Ryan. Mm. When another commenter asked what the public can do to help, the Waller family replied, I'm just hoping that maybe with enough pressure from the public that there will be an investigation as to how the city of Phoenix was so easily able to get our case dismissed just three weeks before we were going to finally get our day in court. The Waller family is still waiting for justice and have had fucking zero. The end. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty unsurprised. It's and fucking it's- horrible. I can see why you hate this story so much, especially because, I mean, I already hate break-in robbery stories to yeah. begin with, so that that alone is scary because it yeah. could happen to anyone. But you know what else could happen to anyone? You're doing fucking nothing wrong, and yes. next thing you know, you are in desperate need of medical care, and nobody's going to help That's you even if point. you're screaming it in their face. That's a great point. It's like it's like the worst fear. Like you are going to the one person. Who has the power to fix what's and happening? And not only that, not only are they denying you something you desperately need or you could die, but they're blaming you for it mm-hmm. and saying you're being dramatic. It's the most gaslighty thing I could ever imagine. Yeah, it's horrible. It's just it's the horrible. most help helpless feeling. And the fact that it could happen to any of us in a second from right now. Yeah, and what what upsets me too, like seriously upsets me, is just the fact that like his family was like, we want to bring this to court. And, you know, obviously for the justice of their son, but also to say this can't happen again, you know, Mm -hmm. like that's what these cases are for to like set things right and make sure this doesn't happen again to another family, to another person. And then a judge is like, oh, sorry, actually, we don't need to take this to trial. We're just dismissing it. And I wish I, I like, you know, the the commenter said, what can we do? And they said, we just really want enough pressure from the public and i'm like you know we have a platform and i'm like how do we do that i don't know i i wish i had a better understanding of like how to i don't know how to do this like like do i like do we do a petition like i I don't know i don't know so you know i'd love to i mean you know I'd love to hear from people who have, you know, an understanding of this world and what will actually make a difference. Because sometimes I feel like I sign a million petitions and I'm like, is it doing anything? Maybe, maybe not. Um, yeah. But if anybody knows like what we can really do um, besides just talk about it and bring it more awareness, I would love to know. Yeah. Because, um, you know, this and so many of our stories, like I would just love to be able to be helpful be helpful right it's like we're talking about it and then we hang up like i'd love to at least make some sort of difference you know yeah (sighs) i uh man just nothing more infuriating and off-putting and just a very large reminder that you can't even trust the authorities that are supposed to be set in place to help you yeah not necessarily anyway it's uh you should you should be able to you should be able to yeah and you know that's the kind of shit we're we're hoping will be the future but um it's a really long road i think what a good story christine what a great fun happy story Uh wow it's like i cursed you what Uh happened there Uh uh-oh we're good for a second we weren't are you Uh-oh. good? Yeah, my mic screwed up and now it's... No, it's talking into the mic now. I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden my whole computer started flashing all these things and it said... It said a lot of things. I'm so it sorry. It said, time to go. It time said, to hang you're up. done. Um, hmm. But what, what did you say last? I didn't hear it. Oh, I said, what a fun, good story. <laughs> and then I think... You... <laughs> my computer was like, no! <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it told me to shut up, but it accidentally made you shut up. So. No! Oh man. Okay. Well, I guess we'll we'll take that cue and uh we'll bounce. Good good luck on your sh- on your live show tomorrow, Christine. Hey Arizona. Love you. Don't love your police force. Gonna see you in a <laughs> few short hours. Can't wait. <laughs> and that's why we drink.